Hello, everyone. The first part of 70th episode is finally out, and it was just crazy. And what intrigued me the most is the appearance of the possible leader of Astro Toilets, who told Titan TV Man that they all will die. So today, I want to talk about not only this guy and what he can bring to us in the future episodes, but about the whole race of Astro Toilets in general. Where did they come from? Why are they so freaking powerful? And why do I call them the next generation of Skabidi Toilets? If you want to know all the answers to these questions, then put all your business aside, get your tea and snacks ready, and prepare for a good ride. Let's go. If you guys don't remember, we're calling these smart but dangerous bros Astro Toilets, because Dafuk himself called them so in the description under his 60th episode, so that's how this name became official. But before episode 60, I used to call the very first Astro guy the UFO Toilet. So that's how I will address the dude from episode 53. So that wouldn't make you confused. Now, I want to explain the whole history of Astro Toilet's appearances to you. Although those toilets were quite rare, with each emergence they had been bringing some new or cool information about themselves to us. It all started in episode 53, when we saw the UFO Toilet for the first time appearing seemingly out of nowhere. But there's one important detail that I caught just recently. In episode 52, just before the appearance of Astro Toilets, two inscriptions could be noticed. Here's the first one, which sounds like new species are already here. And here's the second one. Your real enemy is... with the smudged final word. What if it indicated to Astro Toilets all this time? And it's not all that I noticed after episode 70 came out, but I'll talk about it a bit later. For now, let's get back to the UFO toilet from episode 53. Just by the quick look at it, we could have said that this toilet is not like the other ordinary Skibidi. His eyes are red, as if he was a mutant or some sort of very powerful creature, and his body represents a swiftly spinning and rotating metal ring protecting his main core as a shield. Under this ring-like construction, this UFO toilet has large and prominent photon laser cannon which looks extremely intimidating due to its bright contrast color. Besides that, the UFO toilet has a weirdly shaped metal helmet studded with large cylindrical tubes that may serve for different kinds of purposes, in my opinion. Firstly, its purpose can be to stabilize the work of all the processes in his body and to control his abilities. And secondly, those types of tubes may be compared with the red vision googles that Buzzsaw Skibidi wore in episode 49, and they may be the heavily upgraded version of sunglasses, which would be way more difficult to break. Also, draw your attention to the way this UFO toilet appeared in the first place. Many of you guys may think that he teleported himself, but this is not true. Let's watch it frame by frame. This Skibidi seems to emerge at supersonic speed, as if he was the Han Solo spaceship from the movie series called Star Wars. We can also see it more clearly here. I think they are able to do that due to the details in their mechanism resembling electrodes combined with the spinning coil, because I assume it generates electricity, which they use to create sudden movements or fly away at lightning speed. Remember this detail, because I'll get back to it a bit later. So watch this video to the end to understand everything. And by the way, I know that some viewers may think that it was Astro Toilets that influenced the rapid growth of Skibidi technical improvements, meaning that some Skibidi learnt the ability to teleport after the episode 53, where Astro showed up for the first time. But I don't think this is the case, because as I said earlier, Astro Toilets do not teleport, but travel at the very high speed. I believe that the ability to teleport was stolen by Skibidi from the race on TV Men instead. So the UFO toilet appears, and with just one powerful shot, demolishes Big Speakerman standing in his way, and who could have thought what would happen to Plungerman next if it wasn't for Titan Cameraman who drove him away? Based on this first appearance, I can say that when Astro Toilets were still aligned with the Skibidi army, their goal was to strike chaos in the ranks of the Alliance and to divert its members' attention from something more important. And due to the appearance of those new toilets and the way how smartly they behaved, it seemed obvious that they were about to be the biggest threat for the Alliance soon. Next time we saw Astro Toilets happened in Episode 55, when the Alliance forces were on their way to free the infected Titan Speakerman from the parasite who controlled him. And for that reason, they brought the tank with the upgraded anti-parasite cannon on it. Astro Toilets were definitely aware of this plan, so given how smart they are, they developed a special strategy to badly hurt the Alliance this time. 
Another UFO toilet showed up in the right time and in the right place in order to strategically lure out Titan Cameraman, who wouldn't allow Skibidi to destroy this anti-parasite cannon tank, as that was the most important factor for the mission of freeing Titan Speakerman. So when Titan Cameraman got tricked, Skibidi skulls showed up just a moment after, and destroyed this precious weapon in the matter of seconds with the deadly acid he was equipped with. Based on this sabotage we just observed, I can say another thing about Astro Toilets. Their level of intelligence is much higher than of any other Skibidis we saw earlier. They are able to plan complicated schemes and manipulate with the Alliance. And it's highly possible that Skibidi Army in general started improving both in terms of physical upgrades and strategies after Astro Toilets appeared in the series. Because we saw so many crazily developed Skibidi after how Astro Toilets joined the game and elevated it on the whole another level. And I believe this is no coincidence. That's why it is appropriate for me to say that Astro Toilets are the cleverest and most dangerous Skibidi of all. And they pose the biggest threat for the Alliance forces right now. Plus, add to it the fact that the Alliance doesn't know much about them yet. And the secrecy of this species is another important factor about their strength. But as we know, this operation of theirs failed anyways, because Titan Speakerman got freed with the help of TV Woman, and the anti-parasite cannon wasn't even needed for episode 57. By the way, speaking of it, there was a betrayal sign in this episode, and I know that many of you guys interpreted it as a hint that Defuk provided us with about the possible betrayal of Astro Toilets in episode 60. But I really think it was actually connected to the plot arc between TV Woman and Simp Cameraman, whom she left on the battlefield while deciding to save Plungerman only instead. And now, let's actually talk about episode 60, because there's a lot to unpack here. So, as I already told you, Skibidi Army failed to majorly harm the Alliance in episode 57, combined with G Toilet, who didn't do anything useful to prevent the process of liberation of Titan Speakerman. And in episode 60, we see Astro Toilets appearing once again six episodes after, and they seem to be mad as hell. Dafuk wrote in the description under this video, Astro Toilets are mad on G-Toilets' failures. And that gave everyone the idea that Astro Toilets were planning to betray Skibidi Army and destroy G-Man for good. And there are a few interesting aspects of this scene I'd like to talk about. So first of all, if you follow my channel for quite long, then you must be knowing that I had my own special theory about it. In my analysis of episode 60, I said that Astro Toilets could actually take G-Man for a traitor, considering his failure on the battlefield in episode 57, and even asked him about it. So they didn't betray G-Man Toilet, they only suspected him of betraying them. When Skibidi UFO tells G-Man at the end that he is a traitor, he replies, nip nip nip. I even assumed that they didn't plan to actually destroy him, but rather squeeze some information out him under a certain amount of pressure, if you know what I mean. But as Skibidi scientists showed up to ferociously protect his military leader from Astro Toilets, they flew away, which marked the end of their cooperation with Skibidi Army. And since then, their fraction became on their own. And yet, I wasn't completely sure of that. Because when we got the information that confirmed the existence of G-Man's clones, I started to think that maybe Astro Toilets were still on the Skibidi side in episode 60. What if they just played along with Skibidi Scientist who put this whole show to convince the Alliance that there is a disunion in the Skibidi army? And then it led the Titans into a trap. But then, when episode 70 came out, everything fell into place. My initial theory turned out to be true, and I can safely say that Astro Toilets are on no one's side now, and they're behaving according to their own motifs and reasons. But before episode 70, Astro Toilets appeared one more time, although it wasn't that easy to catch. In episode 68, during the epic battle between Titan TV Man and the clones of G-Man, one Astro Toilet could be noticed observing them fighting sneakily, without any intention to be seen. He had been simply hovering there, not trying to intervene in the battle, which once again proves the fact that Astro Toilets have actually parted ways with Skibidi Army and established their own faction in this never-ending showdown. My suggestion is that this particular Astro Toilet had been quietly gathering the information he and his fraction needed while observing this fight, and I assume that it could be put into use later. Maybe he had been analyzing Titan TV Man's new abilities and the way they worked, and considering how smart Astro Toilets are, it wouldn't surprise me at all if he got everything he needed based on just this one observation. 
Remember how easily Astro Toilet from Episode 70 managed to deal with Titan TV Man, putting his own powerful weapon against him? Now I can see how he was able to predict Titan TV Man's movements before the fight even started. Now let's get to Episode 70. The appearance of this badass Astro Toilet, one of the brightest highlights in the whole episode, and mind that it had many awesome moments in here. The way he marked his sudden emergence by literally tearing this poor DJ Skibidi apart was extra cool and hella unsettling at the same time. And by the way, do you remember what I told you in the beginning of this video? How I managed to catch another important detail? Let's get back to the shorts version of episode 66, where the real threat sign could be noticed. What if Dafuk had been preparing us to the idea of Astro Toilets becoming the new powerful enemies for the Alliance all this time? And the appearance of this guy in episode 70 was calculated a long time ago. That's just crazy. Some of you folks believe that this Astro Toilet is the same guy with black goatee we already saw in episode 60. And there are a few things that may allow you to think so. It's the beard that looks quite similar and the structure of his astro body with three claws, one of which was torn off by Skibidi Scientist. And if we'd stuck with this idea, it would also kind of explain the moment when Astro dodged Titan TV Man's blast that could have torn his claw off, which already happened in Episode 60. It could be some sort of reference. So, I see why you'd think that Astro from the 70th episode is just an upgraded version of this big guy from Episode 60. And still, I have another thought about it. Let me explain. If I were to compare Astro from episode 70 to someone from episode 60, it would be this little guy floating around G-Toilet before the attack and not the other way around. Why? Because his face looks much more similar and he creates an impression of a smart leader-like guy who tries to pull out the necessary information out of G-Man while the Astro with claws and a beard is just his manpower or something like that. And if you remember the way Astro from the last episode behaved, that would sound reasonable to you. Some of you folks believe that this Astro Toilet is the same guy we already saw in Episode 60, but honestly, I think it's a completely new character, and let me explain why. First of all, it's the size. In Episode 70, this Astro Toilet looks as terrific as Titans themselves, while Astro from Episode 60 looked almost tiny in comparison with G-Toilet. The second thing is, their equipment looks very different too. Astro Toilet from Episode 70 has a completely different helmet, and instead of a spinning coil, he has another core body with three powerful futuristic claws that are capable of a bunch of whole new abilities, such as to magnetically pull, repel, and throw different objects. And the most important factor for me, the expression on their faces and the way they behave, are drastically different as well. In 70th episode, he's so confident in his powers and calm that it creates an expression that he's no ordinary astro toilet, but someone much more significant. I believe this guy may be the leader of the Astro Toilet's fraction, because the final battle is already happening, and it's about freaking time for the leader of Astro to show up. The stakes are high, and Dafuk is supposed to use any possible opportunity to stun us as viewers. Now when we know everything about Astro Toilets that we have so far, let's talk about where they possibly came from. I think that it's no wonder for you guys that I don't support the idea that Astro Toilets had been created by Skibidi Scientist, because it wouldn't make any sense. Even during their very first appearance in episode 53, they already gave me an impression of creatures that were much more superior than any other Skibidi toilet. They were already so much smarter, shrewder, and craftier than any Skibidi can only dream of. They don't mindlessly mumble Skibidi Skibidi all the time, and they can actually talk. And their futuristic technologies without any kinds of analogs both in the ranks of Skibidi Army and the Alliance only proves this point. So, given that fact, where they can possibly come from, I have a few thoughts on that. First of all, I believe that they are truly a whole other species of toilets. And they came here on Earth either from deeper space or another planet, or from another universe, maybe multiverse even. Astro toilets are creatures that follow their own goal, that has not yet been revealed to us. And those astro we've seen so far are probably just 1% of the whole race that's hiding somewhere else, and probably watching everything that's happening from above. Also, remember this phrase Dafuk used in the description of his 53rd episode, New Species of Toilets Keep Showing Up, which proves once again that Astro Toilets have no relations to Skibidi scientists' inventions. So, could that be that those Astro Toilets we saw were just prospectors who gathered the useful information about both the Alliance and Skibidi Army and watched the whole conflict? What if they actually planned to conquer the Earth themselves? 
so they are a threat to everyone here. So I have a few juicy theories about what can happen to Astro Toilets next. In my previous videos, where I've made a bunch of predictions about whether the Skibidi Toilet series is about to end soon or not, I've said that I am waiting for an open ending where the war between the Alliance and Skibidi Army can possibly get over. But then Astro Toilets will strike from space. And now, as I saw episode 70, I believe even more that this theory will come true. So, there are two possibilities here. The first one is that the war will end in a draw, and when Astro Toilets will rise, the Alliance and Skibidi Army will join their forces in order to fight them back. Or there is the second option. Skibidi Army will lose, and then the Alliance will get another powerful ally that we've never seen before. Maybe it will be Computer Men, because Dafouk really thought of introducing this race to the series at one point, but then changed his mind. Or maybe the whole new race will be created, similar to the Drillman's or Clockman's race from the Dom Studios multiverse. Only tomorrow will tell. And that was all for today. I really hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, hit the like and subscribe buttons under this video. And that was me, Isotoilet. See ya!